There's times I've taken my cock and I've just like grabbed it by the base and, the, and like the head's hanging out and I just kind of shake it back and forth. It's like picture shaking a rag doll. That's what my dick is like. It's like nothing is happening. There's no reason for that. Then. It's, it's not getting hard. It's feeling, it's numb. I'm just yeah. shaking a numb piece of skin. Yeah. I, 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 I can't quite well grasp that. <laughs> I can. <laughs> that it would be uh, pleasurable to do anything like it's not. that. It's not. No. It's called escaping. Yeah. You know, sometimes you'll have one beer more than you meant to. Like, you know what? I'll have a couple. You, you know, now you're putting it in terms I can understand. You're not thirsty. No, I just meant to have maybe one or two. And, uh, you know, eight beers in, I'm going, why am I still drinking this? <laughs> I'm not thirsty. This isn't something special now. I'm just... You know, shoving beer down my gullet. Eight beers and one patent leather shoe in the grill later. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I take cabs now, I swear. One sobbing apology to a family later. I, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, uh, I'm a fag these days when it comes to uh, you know drunk driving. I just can't do it. Too much to lose. There's ten years in jail. If you I know. Money. I'm petrified of that. Like, completely petrified. So, uh... If I'm going to be going out, I'll, I'll take a cab. To I'll sell you for your house? Oh, I know. They'd get it? I'll take the house. No, I don't need that shit. And then just the thought of, like, you know, going through all that. Oh, the court and, you know, oh, you were drunk and this. And then the paper would pick it up. And ugh, then I'm automatically a, a bigger scumbag than I'm perceived now. Yeah. Oh, oh the church sex jock yeah. kills. Yeah, in new Dewey fucking controversy. Ugh, little kid on life support because of me. Ugh. No, I'll cab it. Let those crazy Long Island cab drivers to uh, drive me around. And all I'm thinking of is how it would affect me and my mortgage because the show would be in trouble. Exactly. I'm not thinking about the victim. There's probably a morality clause where they'd fire me and not have to pay me anything. I'd be knocking tin again. Remember me? I was Anthony from the Opie and Anthony show. Yeah, no, I used to do this before I did the radio thing. Yeah, I was a Dewey. I, I understand. No, no, nothing. I, I a small apartment down down the road. <laughs> they don't plow it, so I can't come into work. <laughs> but it's uh, yeah, that would be horrible. So uh, I'd rather just cab it these days. And then the cab is great because now I don't even have to think about it. Like I, in the bar, I'd be there going, eh. now fuck it. Sure, I'll take that shot. Sure, I'll take that beer. Can you comprehend going back to another job after this? No. I can't either. <clears throat> it, it, it's actually a fear. It's a legitimate phobia I have now of going back to a normal job that, you know, I used to have. It's, it's, I'd say it is up there as my number one fear. I would have to agree with that. <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it's something I think about every day. Every day, every day, I think about I, I think it. Think about it. It's scary. <clears throat> I, I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to have to get up and work for like a real job and boss and and work hard. <laughs> I I did it for years. Now I know I'm making a lot of friends uh, in the listeners that are right now getting up saying, "Go fuck yourself." But no, you're also acknowledging <clears throat> what they do is is hard. Yeah, it sucks, and that I did it. I did it for more years than I did radio. I wonder when I could stop saying that. You can't hate something unless you've you've experienced it before. Yeah. So I and mean, I know what it's like to work shit jobs, and I would, I, I would, I would be, I would probably kill myself. Yeah, it, it would be <laughs> like I don't know. Not only that, but like people, uh, uh, believe it or not, from from what I've said on this show and stuff, I'm not a complete only materialistic guy. I enjoy my toys. I enjoy the pleasures that this great job has offered me through uh, my radio career and and uh but the things that I'm most fearful of is going back to the point where I really have to worry where rent is coming from and if I'm going to have to sleep in my car again because I had to sleep in my car for a while and stuff. And the like it would actually be embarrassing for my family, I think. Not for them. Like, for me, to see my family after now completely failing. And you know that they'd love you anyway and go, oh, Of hey. course they would. And it's like, uh. hey, you had a good run and, and things like that. And it's like, so, what are you doing? Oh, yeah, 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 back in sheet metal work. No, that's good. You know something? It's a good thing you learned to trade because now, see, you'd, you'd be out in, in, with no luck and now you have a job and, and it's great and you know, put the gun away. Yeah. Put the gun. It's it, not the end of the world. It's yeah, not yeah. the end of the world. It's not the end. And you know, 
you never know what's going to happen in the future. You could get back or something else. Uh, and that, to me, is like petrifying. I know comedians who go back to day jobs after 15 years. Ooh, I know some that should. But I don't know how you do it. I, I can't comprehend ever... Unless they didn't, never, they don't mind because they always kind of kept a foot in that world. But I can't comprehend ever looking back saying I used to just do comedy and now no. I do comedy and this because now I have to do this. Too. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did Oof. the job that I really loved doing. You know, when people, oh well, you got a job you love doing. It's not even like working. Shut it. <laughs> but uh, it's it's kind of true. Uh, so to have to go back to another job would would kill me. The stresses of this job, they're, they're mm. stressful and whatever, but it's nothing. No. Compared to even the shitty paying jobs I had were fucked because you hated it. It was like I, I hear people talk about like rent money. Yeah, and I can't comprehend. Not that I can't comprehend it, but it's like I'm, I'm like God damn, I'm so lucky not to have to worry about like is my phone bill gonna get paid? Like I know my yeah. phone bill's gonna get paid. Yeah. My mortgage I worry about, but like the phone bill I don't worry about. Like little shit like going out to dinner I don't worry about. Yeah, yeah, that's like the kind of stuff that y y and you do. I, I like how you say lucky because I I say hmm. that all the time. It's like. You're so fucking lucky because there are plenty of people that want to do the job yeah. that are not doing the job. But uh, it's it's like a lucky thing. And I do remember not paying the landlord and, and him banging on the door and me having to hide. I'm hiding from the landlord so he doesn't kick me out because I spent the rent on slot cars. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in my 20s. What's wrong with me? I remember working at a convenience store when I was like 18, back when I was in my wigger phase. When I would, uh, wear, the, I would, wear, I would wear a sky blue Kango to work. I was the worst. Stop it. And, yeah, I don't got to take your shit, motherfucker. You, yeah, I would say that to old ladies. And they're like, <laughs> tough thugs would come in. They'd go, all right. And I'd go, word. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And I remember in, in this place, in, in like the meat tray, they had like, yeah, we served meat and, and cheese and stuff. We had like a little deli counter. There was all these little teeny mouse teeth prints in the fucking no. food <laughs> and little balled up hashish turds the mice were shitting and eating the food <laughs> and i told the district manager pete his name was with a fucking with a with a, a gay porn mustache He's like oh no that's fine you could sell it you could sell it and yeah, i just of course I, I could i but... kept not selling it to customers that was the job i was doing it was like i had to clean the mouse shit off the food <laughs> before i sold it to people what a horrible place <laughs> it was terrible <laughs> so happy i don't do that anymore and you did you did sell it to them uh i want you to i would try to turn did the meat around like, shake your head no, no no you don't want this yes are you sure you want this take a look at it <laughs> just in case i was being tape recorded take a close look <laughs> yeah that was a horrible fucking oh. horrible game just really bad jobs that you just don't want to do, and I, I couldn't imagine going back to, and uh, it's it's it horrifies me. It think, is the number one fear because yeah. I think of it every day. I remember the big deal I felt when I missed make. I think it was three thirty five an hour when I started, and then I went to Pergament and I was driving a forklift, and I remember bragging to people. Forklift. Oh no, from Pergament to something else. And I think it was like seven something an hour. They're like getting seven something an hour. I'm wow. like, yeah, man, it's a great fucking gig. And Living large. Drive me and Joe in a fucking forklift, and I had a big boom, a, a, like a giant boom on the front to take 20-foot copper tubing off the back of a truck, and the fucking ramp was broken. Like, rust had rotted out the bottom of the ramp. So if I came down the right side of the ramp, <laughs> the forklift was going to flip and fall off the dock. So I had to go to the middle left. It was a fucking horrible job. I can't believe you were a forklift driver. I was a good forklift operator. Were you? I think so. <laughs> I never killed anyone, and no one ever killed me. <laughs> I constitutes a good forklift the, the, the other guys in the warehouse were phenomenal like we were attached to another it was another tr uh, trucking company and i worked for Ciro copper and it was just i was the only one and i would have to like these flatbeds outdoors in january 10 degrees oh, out, no, yeah, yeah. unloading fucking 20 foot giant long uh, bundles of copper tubing it was a fucking horrible job it was a tough job you have to go on the truck and lift shit. It was fucking freezing. And wrap the cold metal is in, in, in the winter. For some reason, <clears throat> metal gets colder than outside is. I don't know how it happens. But, like, you'll be outside and just go, it's really fucking cold out. And then you go to grab metal and go, why did they refrigerate the metal? It's colder than outside. With sheet metal, was the same thing, like working uh, uh, sheet metal jobs. You'd have to load the trucks up with these fucking ductwork that was freezing cold. Get to the job site. And then there's people that just are into it. Like this one guy I worked for, I was his helper. 
I was his fucking helper, and I had to like get stuff and 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 help him like put the duct work up and everything. And and he was gung ho guy. Ugh. Like every morning, I'd be drinking my coffee in the van or something. And he'd be like, "All right." Come on, let's start up at seven thirty on the dot. It was like, come on, we got to start up right now, and and uh, and he used to make this was the gayest thing. He'd make me because he couldn't reach around behind him to tie his little was nail he apron. Yeah, his little nail apron. So one of my jobs in the morning was to tie his nail apron on. Ew. How fucking subservient, like, is that? Because it's right over his his ass. You're a sheet metal cuckold. I was. A sh <laughs> I prepped the fucking boss. Wait, was he was he an ex drinker? That sounds like an ex drinker, or or was he an active drinker? I have no idea. I don't. I did. He, he drank some beers, okay. but uh, I don't know if he was a drunk or not. You know, by my standards, <laughs> nobody. Is. Yeah, William Holden was a fucking <laughs> teetotaler. <laughs> but he he'd be like, all right, uh, let's. He go, let's suit up. Like, suit up. I'd put a nail apron on and put a hammer in my fucking belt. But he'd be like, all right. So, and he'd stand up and, like, fucking putting the robes around a fucking Caesar. I had to uh, <laughs> dress him in his armor and, and, and put this on. And I felt so degraded yeah. every day having to tie that bow. Tied that little bow. All right, a little tighter. That's good. Is it? Is it good? And that's what, that's what I had to do. And then he would tell me what I had to do, like, all day. All right, get me that. I need three of these. Go to the truck and pick up. Put more gas in the generator. And I'd be freezing cold, just wishing I could have a better job. And, and it's horrifying, the thought of, of of having to go back to Dude, that. I drove by that place, that old copper. It's out of business now. It might be still be. I think well, you left. You were the best forklift driver this side of the Mississippi. For Portland, Oregon, or Portland, Maine, for that matter. <laughs> and it was, uh, I remember me and my boss, there was a, this. this Yay, pump. pudding. Right. Oh, Dan. Oh, I hope it Sorry, really is, too. No, please. It's appropriate. <laughs> there was uh, a hooker named Pam, a black girl, who walked behind the thing. And she was like not even an attractive hooker. She was like just wore dungarees and a fucking, you know, like, a, like just a, a, she was a drug addict hooker. And so she had sucked my dick or whatever. Ooh. And so she was going to suck uh, the guys at work, the supervisor. He was an older guy. He was a big, fat guy. He was in his 50s. And uh, it this was still went on even when you just worked. At dude, a this is when job. I was fucking twenty-two years old. <laughs> or twenty-one. I hadn't even done comedy yet. Uh, and uh, she, we worked like we had like a little office inside a giant warehouse which belonged to another company. So we rented warehouse space from another bigger company. So our office was kind of closed off. So the hooker walked in and she was going to take care of him. And he would always go, "Okay, Jim, I'll see you Monday." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll see you Monday, Jim. Just a big fat dude. I come back in Monday, I'm like, how was it? He goes, Jim, she stole my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> this dummy. He, he go, I go, what happened? I'm like, I told you to put your wallet, because I did tell him, put your wallet in the desk drawer. Don't leave it in the back of your pants, or oh, just take your dick out. He goes, shit. this is how naive he was. He goes, no, he goes, you know, I pulled my pants down on my ankles and sat back, you know, because I wanted her to enjoy the experience. Oh, she's going to enjoy I'm it. I'm like, you're morbidly obese, you're in your 60s, <laughs> and she's sucking your dick so that she doesn't shake apart from lack of drugs. <laughs> how much fun is she having, fucking, fucking anchovy balls? <laughs> She's not having fun, old man. And she did the gag when she reached into his, his pulled down pants pocket and took oh, his wallet his out. His awful poly. They were probably turned inside out because, you know, <laughs> fatty. I bet he had his pants pulled down to his shoes and his black socks slumped to his fucking his fat calves. With those old 50s garters on. <laughs> yeah, little, little sock garters holding them on. And How uh, yeah, easy must it be for a girl to pick a pocket that is around someone's ankles? Dude, if you could fucking pick his pocket, you could tie his shoes together. <laughs> she probably could have rifled through his wallet and picked out the credit card she was going to use. <laughs> what a dope. Uh, what an idiot. You but I'll never forget a... that, because I think she had sucked my dick in the car one time, and then I'm like, yeah, she gives a great blowjob. I had awful fucking regular hookers back Would then. Would she come around like the coffee truck? They they would, actually. Well, really? Like a lot lizard. Yeah, she'd probably stop in. It was We were in the back of the... We were behind. I should go and get photos of this place one day. It really was a fucking horrible back of the lot place. It was yeah. really an isolated place. Yeah. I, I look at certain places when I drive home now and stuff like warehouses. You can see uh, driving through Queens, uh, the garage doors are open and you see guys working in there. 
and and I look in and think like how horrible that is, but how familiar it becomes to you when you do work there. Yeah. Like when you first go in and I'd apply for one of these shit jobs, you look around, and everything's unfamiliar, and then you just get into this rut where you're coming, you know where everything is, you know who everyone is, you know you, you, what your, your shit fucking job will be that day, and it just becomes so goddamn depressing to uh, to do on a daily basis. Yeah, but what seems like you'll never make it a part of your comfort zone, like I'll never feel at home in that place, and then you do, and yeah, you and grow to becomes, hate it. Yeah, you know every nook and cranny, and you, you try to just, you try to have fun with people, and... And maybe you'll have a few laughs during the day and then realize, though, that it just sucks being there. It's <laughs> weird the things you remember from the, like, I remember when I worked at Pergamon before that, this is when I, I, I was just getting sober, so it's probably 1987 in that area. And I, I drove a forklift in the back, and this was the new Pergamon in the Brunswick Shopping Center. Ooh. This this was like a fucking cheese dick lame, like, little fucking one-level mall that opened <laughs> in the North Brunswick. That the, Half the stores, that, it was called the Fashion Plaza. <laughs> that, the fa there was nothing thing fashionable about it. <laughs> Pergament was one of the anchor stores in the How fashion plaza. in a fashion Exactly. Plaza? It's fucking horrible. <laughs> and I, I'll never forget my uh, supervisor there was a, was a very, very fat lesbian who had tattoos. And when she wanted me to go buy food, she'd always like get me to go and she'd pay and she'd always go, you fly, I'll buy. Oh. And I always remembered that. And for some reason, my girlfriend was going to, I wanted her oh, to walk no. <laughs> to get something and I almost said, you fly, I'll buy. And I didn't say it because I pay for everything. <laughs> yeah. So even if I fly, I'll buy. If you're constantly buying, <laughs> but it just she never flies. It just would have seemed to, because <laughs> yeah. not a co-worker, it's yeah. a girl I fuck. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember this black guy, Malcolm. You suck, I'll pull out a buck. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, you fuck, I'll pay a few bucks. <laughs> even if you don't fuck, I'll pay a few bucks. Because I'm hungry, what am I going to do, eat in front of you? <laughs> Uh, shit, I'd uh, uh, but uh, yeah, the coffee trucks would come by, and um, I, I would just be starving and have no money and have to take a tab out with the guy. And the, there's nothing worse than being into alone with the fucking mobbed up <laughs> coffee truck guy uh, for egg sandwiches that we used to say made at some place in Central Islip, and I knew. Central Central Islip is Zimbabwe. Yeah. It is just a, an awful place. I used to live there. It's horrid. And uh, I'd look at these sandwiches, these egg sandwiches, and, and just be like, between hunger and... This is how I know that if I was on that fucking plane crash from Alive, I'd have been the first one just mowing down on someone's dead ass, just eating it. Because I would, I would pick up these egg sandwiches knowing where they came from, probably being spit on, yeah, and, and, and just eat it, not thinking twice. Like, the hunger, and, and believe me, it wasn't like hunger like days have gone by, but the hunger just made me forget the fact that these this food is probably being touched and, and abused by people. What's worse than when you get to a new job? I had a temp job one time. I was such a fucking bum. And I was so bad at this stuff. <laughs> this is this when I was drinking. I was me and my buddy Bill D'Angelo. And Bill, if you're listening, I got your message. Hello, it is Bill. Hello, Bill. We were doing this job in fucking, uh, it was like a warehouse. It was like centrifuges. And what is worse than having to shit on a new job oh, where you yeah. know the bathroom is awful and, and like you, you like your whole stomach seizes up? And you know that <laughs> when you're trying to hold in a shit and you're standing there and you go, <laughs> I don't think I've made the sound, but I, think That's I the, know the you feeling. You don't make the sound, but the feeling of a, like, you know, I, I just want to talk, hey! <laughs> <laughs> and you get really stiff and you can't walk because one step and you're going to shit. What's oh, worse than having done, to shit yeah. at a new job? Yeah, There's nothing it, yeah, worse. You don't, you don't want to. First of all, you don't even want to go away from what you're supposed to be doing uh, for fear you'll be looking, you'll look at like you're lazy. Yeah, yeah, put it. Yeah, you don't want to yeah. have to. <laughs> you don't want to do that. And then, yeah, the uncomfortable. What's the best bowl? You haven't figured out what's the best turlet yet. Because I like a long shit. Like I'm the worst. Like whenever I go to shit, everyone who knows that I was just there knows I've been <laughs> shitting. Because I'm gone too long to have been pissing. <laughs> I like a relaxing shit. Yeah. Yeah. And on the job, you just can't do that. They should have some kind of. Um, I'm going to invent this pants that cuff up inside the pant leg. So as you're walking doesn't look like anything it's just pants but you could pull down uh, artificial shoe tops 
that will go over your shoes so that when you're shitting in the stall and people come by, it doesn't look like your shoes. Because the people look at your shoes to see who's shitting there. I know it happened to me a couple of times. It's like, oh, I had a good dump in there, did you? And I'm like, fucking 511 boots. Everyone knows them. So fake shoe tops. I'll call them shit spats. Spats. <laughs> They're fucking spats. What a great infomercial that would be. Oh. You show people talking about the advantages of no one knowing it was you shitting. Shitting. You That'd know, my wonderful. boss, I would never get raises. As soon as they didn't think it was me stinking up the bathroom, I advanced in the company. You know, testimonials. And they can have, like, that badly acted thing where someone's on the ball shitting, and the boss comes in, sees the shoes, <laughs> and shakes his head. Ha oh, ha, Smith, it's you again. <laughs> Is that account going to be completed by today? And he knows it's him. <laughs> yeah, and the boss and like, the pretty secretary are both just looking at Smith's empty chair. <laughs> <laughs> Someone says they should be called Splats. Oh, it's Steve from Bayshore. Splats! <laughs> ah, the audience applauding. Oh, yeah, I could use that. I shit a lot. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> Yeah, they take the fucking... I, I love the idea that him and the hot secretary just both noticing that Smith has gone Smith's again. Smith's gone again, and the newspaper's gone. <laughs> you know, you know, whoever has read the newspaper at a urinal, you don't. You fucking... It's gonna, I am going to be shitting for a long time. And they can't say shit, so they have to do little things to get around it. Like, they have a little a, a little thing that says, clothespin bin, and, and it's empty, and they're all wearing them on their noses in the office. <laughs> Is that Smith again? Yeah, that oh. damn Smith and his his colon cancer. He can't finish the O'Reilly account because he's shitting again. <laughs> and they allude to it in the office, like, "Yeah, we're gonna have to move Smith's desk into there." God damn that Smith! Oh, he stinks. Oh, that was wonderful. That's wonderful. It's certainly.